What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from dopetechdaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys the top tips to customize your Galaxy Note 7 and improve your experience. Now I did this video for the Galaxy S7 Edge and a lot of these tips are gonna be repeats. So if you wanna check out the original video, I will link my top nine tips to customize the S7 Edge and improve experience below. Some of these I'm gonna to touch on real quickly since I also covered them in that video. I will point out the new tips that are specific to the Galaxy Note 7. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Now these are not tips that you have to implement. These are tips that you could implement to improve battery life or achieve other functionality, customize your device, and make it look better and work better for you. Now as you guys know, I normally keep a little Google Keep document here to keep me on track in my reviews, and I've done that again. You can see here the very first thing that I have on my list, set up multiple fingerprints, even duplicates to add accuracy. So this is very important. The fingerprint scanner, of course, is there. You should use it because it makes it easy to use the phone and secure it right there, as you guys can see. It's very fast, very accurate. And in order to make sure that you have enough fingerprints set up, you wanna go in here to lock screen and security, and then you can choose fingerprints here. And then you'll have to enter your pen. So you have to enter a pen or have a pattern, oops, enter a pattern in order to get to the fingerprints. And then you'll wanna add multiple fingerprints. I recommend adding both thumbs here and then also adding your index finger so that when the phone is sitting on the table like this, you can press with your index finger to open it up. It's kind of awkward to do it with your thumb in that case. Now, one thing you really wanna do though in order to increase the accuracy of the scanner is to add the same fingerprint multiple times. So I already added this thumb one time when I set up the phone, but I'll go ahead and add it again, which will actually allow the scanner to capture more of the data of my thumb and of course change the position of your thumb as you move it around to set up the scanner. And that's gonna increase the accuracy with which the scanner recognizes my thumb. So if you add each of your thumbs twice and you use your thumbs the most to unlock it, that's gonna give you a better experience. The scanner is gonna be more accurate. All right, so that's the first tip there. That was also part of the S7 Edge. So just trying to go through that one a little quickly. The new tip here for the Galaxy Note 7 is to set up the iris scanner. So the iris scanner is in the same location as the fingerprints. So if you go in here to settings, and we go into the lock screen and security. So go back down, lock screen security. Right there below fingerprints, you'll see irises. And if you tap on the irises, you're gonna get the same exact pen prompt there to enter your pen so that you can get inside and edit your irises and add individual ones. So you see I have iris unlock on. Um, and of course you can go in here and actually set it up and edit. So you can see here mask on preview screen. That'll show you sort of what it shows you when you're actually using your eyes, they got some cutesy sort of little cartoonish things. You have to align your eyes with these little glasses in order to get the iris scanner to work. Uh, you can verify your Samsung account in case you get, you get locked out with the iris scanner. Uh, the, basically the way this works, it's gonna be hard for me to actually unlock it from behind the camera because you have to move it close to your face. But when you actually turn the phone back on here, when you're on the lock screen, you swipe up and then it'll try to read your iris. You can see here, it's gonna do a very poor job. I mean, I have to move it pretty close. And yeah, you can see it says hold the device further away. It wants me to use the pen. So I tried, but you have to hold it pretty close. And as you guys can see, I also have glasses on. So that's something else that can interfere with the iris scanner. Um, it's actually a little slower than the fingerprint scanner at this point. I've noticed it is still pretty accurate if I get it pretty close to my face with my glasses on, but you don't wanna do that as there's possibility of damaging your eyes in some way with the iris scanner. So that's where you can set up your iris scanner. If you wanna use that, you can use it in conjunction with the fingerprint scanner as well. You don't have to do either or. Um, it's just a little bit of a shame that's a little bit slower right now, but that'll probably improve over time. Uh, the next thing is to pick a custom theme from the Samsung theme store. Darker themes actually will save you on battery life. So in order to do that, again, we'll go into the settings here. You can see right here where we have wallpapers and themes, you'll wanna choose that. And then you can choose the theme that you wanna use. The default theme is right here. I've installed two other themes. You guys can actually see the one that I was rocking in the beginning of the video I've been using the whole time. This is the coral blue theme. Now this theme actually cost, I think three bucks when I bought it last night from the Samsung store. It matches very beautifully the color of my phone, the coral blue and the rose gold. I really like it. So you can install any custom theme you want here. If you go to the top three dots, you can search, you can look in categories. There's some various themes. You can find what it is you want by color um, or by the type of the theme. The other theme I highly recommend, which was part of my Galaxy S7 Edge video with the tips, is Material Black. If you use Material Black, you're gonna have a chance to save battery life because you have a dark wallpaper. Everything is sort of black. 
and that definitely is going to give you a chance to save battery life with the AMOLED screen. So if you want to save a little bit of battery life by using choosing your theme, this is a good one to go with. It also looks super stealthy and just really, really slick. So I'll go ahead and show you guys the rest of the coral blue theme. You can see the quick settings. It's got hints of rose gold everywhere, like the brightness slider there. And you guys saw when I went to settings, all the settings also have rose gold hints there. It's a very clean theme. I actually like it quite a bit. All right, so that's a tip. If you want to just keep uh, the Samsung theme store to customize, you can go in there and pick that. Uh, the next thing is to turn on Game Launcher and customize the settings. So this is also done from the settings tab. You'll see I already have Game Launcher right here. Uh, and Game Launcher lets you do a couple things. It lets you turn off alerts during your games and it also lets you turn on game tools to customize your experience and also set up sort of how you want your phone to work during the game. I covered this in the S7 Edge again, so I'll link that video below. Another thing you can do, which is really useful, is if you want to save power during your games, you can run your resolution low, frame rate 60 frames per second, uh, or if you want to save power, if you want to save maximum power, you can reduce the resolution even further and also reduce the frame rate to 30 frames per second. So that's a possibility. Uh, game Launcher just gives you a lot of great options to use while you're gaming. So if you're a big mobile gamer, you're definitely going to want to turn that on. And of course, you can do that from within the settings here. Uh, if, you, if you don't have them enabled out of the box, you can do that from the settings by going to Advanced Features, by going to Games, and then you can turn Game Launcher and Game Tools on or off. So there are the game tools I mentioned. No alerts during games, uh, lock recent and back keys, minimize the game, take a screenshot or record. So it'll give you a little floating action button there where you can do all those things. All right, so again, that one is also in the S7 Edge video if you want to see more about that. The next thing is to set up your Apps Edge and then the S Pen shortcuts. So the Apps Edge, I already talked about it in the S7 Edge video, obviously. If you swipe over, the Note has the Edge benefits here. You can see I've got the Edge panels, I've got the calendar, the weather, and then you've got your Apps Edge. What I mean by customize them is you can actually change them. By default, these are all the stock Samsung apps, but if you press the plus sign there, you can fill it in with any of the apps you have. You see I've chosen Instagram, Chrome, Gmail, Dropbox, Backdrops, Android Central, and actually let me add Hangouts there as well. So now I have all eight of the apps that I want to use and not the ones that Samsung gave me out of the box. You also can customize your people edge with your contacts to use the most. I've got my mom, my fiance, a couple of my friends there listed that I contact often. Task Edge, this one I don't use that much, but you can set up a lot of different tasks like taking a selfie, taking a picture, sending an email, but most of this stuff is based on the stock Samsung app. The only thing I might want to do is put in S Pen feature like create a note or create a drawing because I do use my S Pen quite a bit. And then the rest of these are the edge panels. So if you go into the settings, you can change your edge panels. I've got People Edge there, Task Edge, and you can see here Yahoo Sports, CNN, Calendar, Weather, and that's it. But there's a couple more you can download from the Samsung store. Uh, now, the other thing you'll want to customize are the actual S Pen shortcuts. So if you go into Advanced Features and you go into the S Pen at the very top there, you can see you've got Air Command here. Air Command's the one where it lets you, where you take the pen out and then that automatically shows you some shortcuts for which you can use the S Pen. You can edit those and you can change all of them. I added Instagram because I use my S Pen a lot for cropping photos. Talon, which is Twitter, because I use it for scrolling through my Twitter feed. And then I left the other ones the same. Translate, which is great if you're learning a foreign language. You can hover the S Pen over and it'll translate a word for you. Smart Select and create a note. So you can customize those. You'll want to do that so that you have what you're going to use the S Pen for. And then the other thing that's important in the S Pen X, uh, section is you can also have a custom detachment option. You can either bring up Air Command, create a note, or do nothing. So by default, if you take the S Pen out, it's going to do air command, but I set it up so that when I take the S Pen out, it automatically will create a note. So you can see I remove my S Pen, it goes right into S Note, and I can create a note. That's just what I do the most often for my job, so I wanted to set that up so it makes it really easy for me to use. All right, so that, are, that is the S Pen features and also the Edge features. You'll want to set those up and customize them. Uh, the next thing is the Always On Display. You want to choose if you want to use that or not and then customize the Always On Display data. Of course, you can do that by going into Display, and then right here you see Always On Display. Now, one thing I highly recommend, it doesn't really take eat that much battery life, I highly recommend you have it on. And one thing I would do is use the Set Schedule option to set up a custom schedule for when the Always On Display is on. Now, personally, I keep my phone by my bed, and I don't want Always On Display on at night, so I set it to be on from 7 a.m. to midnight. So when I'm sleeping from midnight to uh, 7 a.m., it's not going to be on and bothering me 
in my eye when I have it you know, by my bedside. So you can set up that custom schedule and then you can also change the layout so depending on what you want. You can see my always on display, I've got the dual clocks. My fiance is on the East Coast so I have my time here in Arizona, her time. But you can always change it to various other clocks, digital clocks. You can also do a calendar, so they got a couple calendar options. Both of these will show you all of your notifications or not, if you want you can toggle that off. And then the last option is to show an image here. With the images though, you can't actually show notifications. So personally, I think this is kind of useless because to me, the whole point of always on mode is to actually show your notifications. But that's another option uh, if you wanted to do that. Uh, so that's always on display. Definitely want to think about whether you want to use it. It doesn't really eat that much battery life, so I encourage you to give it a try at least. Another thing that's new with the Galaxy Note 7 is the ability to turn down the screen resolution and the battery saving modes. That'll actually let you get some extra juice. Um, so the way to do that, once again, we're going to go into settings here. And then if you go down to the bottom here where you have, find it, uh, device maintenance. So device maintenance, you see the battery here at the bottom. So tap on battery. And then once you tap on battery, you've got three battery saving options off, mid, and max. So if we tap on mid battery saving, you can see here there's a bunch of options. Limit maximum brightness, change screen resolution, limit device performance, and prevent background network usage. Now these are not going to be set this way by default. I customize them so you can hit customize and change it to what you want. So what I told the Note 7 to do is when I turn on the mid battery saving mode, I want to keep my brightness up, but I want to change my screen resolution to 1080p. You can actually bump it all the way down to 720p if you want to save a lot of battery. So if I go ahead and turn that on, hit apply, it says it's going to save me, uh, give me an extra 40 minutes in battery life projection, which is nice. Of course, if you do that, now your screen is at 1080p. So if you go back and for instance to my email, you can see the text is going to be a little bit, you know, it's going to be a little bit larger. So that is something to think about. Personally, I haven't noticed any amazing performance increase by keeping it that way. Um, but if you want to try to save some battery life, it is something that you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off for the remainder of the video and it'll go ahead and change it back to QHD, get rid of the background process or anything else that you have turned on. All right, so that is a quick look at that. Uh, let's go ahead and back to the keep document, find out what we got next. Uh, the next thing is the blue light filter, which is also a new thing on the Galaxy Note 7. So the blue light filter is a way to uh, reduce harmful light at night that sort of strains your eyes. So it reduces that blue light and replaces it with a more yellow light. You can see right here at the top, you have the blue light filter. And if you tap on the blue light filter, there's a couple options. You can either do no schedule, so it's never on, sunset to sunrise, or custom schedule. Now once again, I set mine to a custom schedule from 12 a.m. to 7 a.m. That's when I'm sleeping, so I want that blue light mode on. So when I'm using the phone in the bed, I'm not straining my eyes too much. The next feature that I highly recommend that you use is installing a third-party keyboard. Now this is really a preference thing. These last four are really a preference thing. I don't like the Samsung keyboard, so I always install a third-party keyboard. There are two good options that I discussed last time. One of those is Google Keyboard, which is the one that I'm using right now. You can download that from the Play Store, it's free. The other one is Chroma Keyboard. Now Chroma Keyboard I just downloaded to show for this video. I've shown it in the past as well. Uh, this keyboard actually lets you change the color to anything you want of your keyboard and sort of lets you match your apps as well if you want to. It'll match the color of your app to your keyboard. So this is definitely a nice cool keyboard. The pro mode does cost money, I think like three bucks, but it is one to look into. So if you guys haven't seen the particular mode for uh, Google Keyboard, I have it on blue right now. You can also change the color, a few different colors for Google Keyboard. That's Google Keyboard. The Samsung Keyboard is just pretty bad at text prediction in my opinion and I also don't like the layout. But again, just a preference thing. I highly recommend that if you don't like the Samsung keyboard to try one of those two. Uh, the next thing is to get a good custom wallpaper. I actually did a whole video on where to get custom wallpapers, so I'll keep this kind of short. I use the app Backdrops, which is a place I get all my custom wallpapers. Highly, highly recommend you check it out. They've got a lot of things in every single category you could possibly want. Uh, from minimal wallpapers to nature wallpapers, but I will link my video about where to find the best wallpapers in Android below, and you guys can look into that, uh, go through the other apps that I talked about as well. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about, which I checked here on accident, is to install a third-party launcher. So I'm not a huge fan of TouchWiz. I use it always to sort of check out the new features, and then I usually install a third-party launcher. You guys can see right there, Action Launcher 3, that's my favorite third-party launcher. You can go ahead and tap on that. 
What that's basically going to do is just change the way the app layout is. It's going to make your app drawer look better. Basically, one huge problem I have with TouchWiz is that it arranges your icons uh, by new uh, icons that you add. It always puts them in a terrible order. It won't let you keep the alphabetical order. You have to keep changing it and rearranging the alphabetical order. So with Action Launcher 3, obviously, you can sort of circumvent that problem. I didn't set it as the default, so it keeps going back. What you'll want to do is once you actually install your default launcher, you'll want to go into your applications, and then you'll want to go to top three dot menu, go to default applications here, and then you can change your launcher here. So you can see here you got your calling, you got your calling messaging, etc. Home screen is where you'll want to go, and you can change the home screen to action three, and then that'll change it to the default if you want to do that. And then of course, along with that, if you have a custom launcher, uh, so let me actually go ahead back there and actually apply action three as my default home. So once you have a custom launcher, the other thing that you can do is apply a custom icon pack. So if you go into action three here, you see under display, I go to icon pack. I've installed a custom icon pack called Antimo from one of my favorite icon pack developers. And that's going to change the entire look of your, of your device with that icon pack. You can see all the icons there are changed very, very nicely, uh, except game launcher there, but the other icons all look very, very nice and uniform. Now, I know someone's going to bring up the fact that with the new themes on Samsung's theme store, you can actually change your icon pack separately from the theme by downloading icons from their store. In my experience so far, the icons in here are really, really garbage between compared to what you can find in the Play Store, but I encourage you to take a look in here. I'll continue looking and see if I find any that are good, but I prefer looking in the Play Store and using a custom launcher if I'm going to change my icon pack. All right, guys, so that is a uh, list of tips. I don't even know how many it was. I'll have to count it up and put it in the title. But I hope you guys enjoyed these tips on how to use the Galaxy Note 7 in a better way, how to customize it, get a little bit better battery life by changing uh, the resolution, etc. Please like and subscribe if you guys enjoy my content. Drop me a comment below if you guys have a question or something else you want to see me cover with the Galaxy Note 7. You can find me at Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus at the links in the description. Also at dopetechdaily.com. I appreciate you guys checking out this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.